Hey, thanks for checking out the computer simulation template for GameMaker Studio 2. So, this is a system for building your own custom operating system in GameMaker Studio to simulate a computer screen for games in the same style as Atomograd and Her Story. In this asset you'd get clickable icons, folders that can contain icons, movable icons that you can remove from a folder and add to another, you will also get a script that makes sure that the player just clicks on the top instance when the windows are stacked on top of each other. Every window also gets this little thing down here that you can press and hey, there's a lot of other small things to make the game feel more like a true operating system. It's easy to use and quick to set up and I'm gonna show you how it works. If you ever need a refresher, there's a readme file in the notes folder that you can take a look at. In this asset, you'll get a few objects and a half a dozen scripts to use. Let's open up the object folder called base. Here you'll find four objects, all with a prefix O base. This means that these are template objects for you to copy and edit to fit your need. The O base icon is for every icon in the game folders and software alike. O base password window is for password protected windows where the player has to type something before proceeding. O base typing window are windows where it's possible for the player to type something like a like in a word document or something. O base window is your normal window object. Duplicate this and use it for every window in the game. Let's uh, duplicate the O base icon and name it like O frog because I like frogs. Open it up and you see a bunch of events tied to this object, but all you have to edit is the create event, where there is just one single function. And that's it. What text do you want to be displayed under this icon? What is the name of the parent window? If this icon is placed on the desktop, this should be just O oh, desktop. Change next window to the window you like this icon to open. I Personally, I want this frog icon to open the frog window, for example. I'll create that in just a minute. Here, you can change where you want the window to be open, and here, if this is a folder or not. This is not a folder, this little frog guy, so I'm setting this to false. And since this is not a folder that can contain other icons, we can just skip these last three arguments. And that's the only function you need to edit for making an icon. That's it, it's that simple. Give it a sprite and bada bing bada boom, you created an icon in less than a minute. It's amazing. Okay, now let's create the window that opens. Duplicate the base object for windows, call it OFROG window or whatever, and head into the create event. And this is the only function you'll have to change. Change the first one to the sprite of the parent object the second argument to true or false, if this is a folder or not, and since this is not a folder, we can just put the zeros in the final three arguments. Change the display name in the draw event, give it your very own sprite, and pow, you got yourself an icon that opens the window. You can drag it around, close it, whatever you like, it's a very simple system to use. But the big thing about this asset is the possibility to have folders. And not just folders that can contain icons, but the possibility to drag these icons to the desktop and to other folders. Like the player can even drag a folder into another folder. This is a feature that a lot of these computer simulation games are lacking, and it's so important if you want the game to feel like an actual computer. It's very easy to implement using this asset. You just have to add a few lines of code. This is how you do it. Duplicate the base icon again and call it something like uh, O folder. I think that's a great name for a folder. Head into the create event and change it like before. But instead of typing false here, you just have to type true instead. We will also connect three arrays to this folder. One to keep keep track of the icons that the folder contains, one for the X position of the icons inside, and one for the Y position of the folders inside, uh, or icons inside, whatever you want to have in this folder. Just call them global folder OBG, global folder X, and global folder Y. And now we're gonna create these 
arrays. It's very quickly done. One for the child ID, one for the X value, and one for the Y value. Go into script window arrays and define the global arrays like so. Global folder ob should be the icon you want to create inside the folder. And the X and Y values are what you, where you want to create it. Here, just copy one of these batches here and bang, that's it. Repeat for every icon you wish to create inside of the folder at the beginning. And finally, head over to script icons. There's a few lines you'll have to update as noted in the readme file at 488, 513, 621 and 799. This script is fully commented and should be easy for everyone to understand, especially since you only need to update four lines for every folder. At 488, change the argument name to the first window to the window name, in this case O folder window, and give it the correct arrays. It's all commented, it's very easy to do. Then scroll down to 513 and do the same thing. Give it the object name and the correct arrays. After that, scroll down to 621 and do the same thing there. And finally, fill out the same info at 799. And hey, that's it. Now we've got a folder that can contain icons or folders. Everything is movable, it's easy to use, and that's how this template works. The only time you need to update script is when you're adding a folder. Otherwise, you can just do everything from the create function. Feel free to check out the other base objects like the password protected files and the writable documents. It's all commented. It should be very easy to understand. Okay, good luck with the game.